Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, today we've got another video in our Nuclear Fortnite series, a two-week period where we're going to talk about uh, nuclear weapons uh, during the 75th anniversary of the only use of nuclear weapons in combat. Tomorrow, August 6th, 2020, is the 75th anniversary of the first use of an atomic weapon uh, in war, and one of only two times that uh, atomic weapons were used, the other one being three days later on August 9th. Today we're going to talk about the decision that was made uh, to use those weapons in combat. Uh, so the United States believed that other countries were experimenting with uh, atomic weapons uh, and the development thereof. And uh, many countries were, including Nazi Germany, uh, even Imperial Japan had nuclear physicists looking at the feasibility of atomic weapons. Uh, so the United States, uh, in combination with Great Britain and Canada, uh, put something like two billion dollars in 1940s money into the Manhattan Project to develop an atomic weapon before any of their enemies could. By the time the atomic weapon had been developed, Germany had already been defeated and surrendered in May of 45. July of 45, the United States, Great Britain, and Russia met in Potsdam and released the Potsdam Declaration saying that they would accept nothing less but unconditional surrender from Japan, uh, and saying that they were going to then send their full military might, which was largely still in Europe, to the Pacific to end that war as quickly as possible. Japan, on the other hand, was not willing to surrender. Part of the Bushido Code uh, is fighting to the death rather than surrendering. And so they were prepared uh, to fight on no matter what. As the United States uh, invasions across the Pacific got closer and closer to Japan, the death toll went up both for Japanese defenders the American attackers, and the civilian populations living on those islands. The United States was strategically taking islands to use them as air bases to allow them to take the next series of islands. Uh, and this culminated with the invasion of the Marianas Islands uh, when the United States took Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. Possession of these islands gave the United States forward air bases close enough to Japan for B-29 superfortresses to operate out of. Uh, and with these aircraft, the United States enacted its pre-war strategy of blockading and systematically destroying Japan's infrastructure. Pre-war, the idea had been to use uh, the Philippine Islands, the American possession near Japan to launch B-17 flying fortresses to strategically raid Japan. Uh, attempts had even been made to use uh, Chinese air bases after uh, the Philippines had fallen. Uh, none of this worked particularly well. It takes massive, massive numbers of aircraft being resupplied with thousands of tons of bombs to be able to destroy an entire nation, essentially. Uh, so, the U.S.'s strategic objectives were changed in 1944 to include the Marianas Islands, which could be used as uh, strategic air bases, and these aircraft started to make raids on Japan. Initially, they were strategic bombing raids, which uh, used conventional ordinance to try and target Japan's military industrial complex, uh, specifically large factory complexes, the destruction of which would prevent them from being able to effectively wage war. 
in response, Japan privatized isn't exactly the right word for this, but they uh, spread out their industrial complex so that uh, components were being manufactured in private homes uh, and in smaller facilities all around the city rather than in large concentrated factory complexes that could be targeted by high-level bombers. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Allies had a solution for this. Uh, near the end of the war in Europe, they had developed firebombing tactics to the point that uh, they could create a firestorm, which would more or less create its own fuel and fully destroy cities, the civilian center, the factory center, everything. In Japan, uh, which used considerably more wood in its construction as opposed to concrete or stone, uh, was much more susceptible to these sorts of raids. Uh, and so when General Curtis LeMay took over the strategic bombing forces in the Pacific, he quickly recognized that uh, regular conventional bombing raids weren't going to work and that incendiary raids was the solution. So the United States set about systematically destroying the civilian population centers of Japan one by one to remove the country's ability to wage war. Uh, and this was supremely effective. By the time the atomic bomb had been developed, there were only four or five large cities that met the criteria for uh, being selected to test the bomb on. Uh, these criteria were the size of the city, uh, that they should have some military value, uh, and that they were set up in such a way that it could show off the bomb's power. Um, the cities which were eventually bombed, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, were on this list, and uh, therefore they were taken off of the list of cities being firebombed to save them for the atomic bomb. Uh, so the United States develops this new weapon, they already have an extremely effective weapon uh, and the fleets of strategic bombers necessary to use uh, this weapon. So sure, the atomic bomb can destroy a city with a single bomb, but the United States is already destroying a city every night. Uh, they can send hundreds, literally hundreds, of B-29 bombers uh, each armed with hundreds of incendiary bombs to create a firestorm. And a firestorm is essentially you create a fire big enough and hot enough that it uh, requires so many resources, that is fuel and air, that it sucks that into itself to continue to expand. Uh, and if you can concentrate enough incendiary bombs in one location, uh, then it will create a fire which basically draws in the rest of the city and manages to spread and destroy the entire city. Uh, Tokyo was one of the first cities tested and was more or less obliterated by a multi-hundred bomber raid. So the ability to destroy Japanese cities already exists. Why use the bomb? Uh, the firebombings were not having an effect. The United States had broken Japanese codes and were listening to Japanese cabinet meetings, in effect, uh, in which the officials were saying, oh yeah, Tokyo was destroyed, doesn't matter, we're still going to fight on. Uh, we'll make bamboo spears if we have to and arm our civilians and school children. Uh, so it didn't look like Japan was going to surrender based on what they were saying. And in order to help the uh, strategic bombing and to prepare for the eventual invasion of Japan, 
the United States had taken the islands of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Iwo Jima could launch fighter aircraft, and Okinawa uh, was a great staging area for the invasion of Japan. Uh, Iwo Jima launching fighter aircraft that was close enough to Japan to escort these bombing raids. Uh, not that uh, the Japanese had the fuel or the resources to continue to uh, send fighters to attack the American high-level bombers. These invasions were hugely costly uh, for the Japanese defenders, the civilian populations, and the American attackers. Uh, and the costs escalated with each invasion as they got closer to Japan. So I believe that the decision to use the atomic bomb on Japan was not so much uh, do we firebomb these cities into oblivion or nuke these cities into oblivion. It was more uh, do we find a way to cause the Japanese to surrender without an invasion or do we launch the invasion of Japan. Now, the invasion of Japan, codenamed Operation Downfall, was already well underway in preparations and uh, in buildup of supplies, men, and material, as stuff was being sent from Europe and from the mainland U.S. to uh, forward bases like the Philippines and Okinawa. Uh, they were preparing to invade the southern Japanese islands, uh, and then eventually uh, the Tokyo Plateau, or Tokyo Plain itself. Preparatory to this, the United States Navy uh, tightened its blockade of the home islands, both with submarines and by sending the fast carrier strike forces to begin bombarding the islands, both with carrier aircraft uh, and their surface ships. American decision makers like President Truman were faced with a growing cost of war, um, reports from the Japanese cabinet that they were not going to surrender, uh, and increasing death tolls from the front lines, combined with a really diminished population base to draw new recruits from to expand the military. Uh, and so, confronted with these facts and figures, they had to decide whether an invasion of Japan or uh, use of atomic weapons was going to be the best way to end the war. Um, and I say that as if they knew that dropping the bomb was going to cause the Japanese to surrender. They didn't. Uh, but they wanted to create a shock situation one aircraft, a very small resource investment, drops one bomb that destroys an entire city. Uh, and if that doesn't make the Japanese surrender, because for the last six months they've seen city after city wiped off the map, well then a couple days later we'll send another aircraft with another bomb and destroy another city. Uh, and we'll tell them it's a new and powerful weapon and we'll warn them that more of them are coming. Uh, and the U.S. gambled that that would be enough to make the Japanese finally surrender. And uh, in this event, it was. And uh, there is an argument that some people make that using the atomic bomb, uh, although it killed tens of thousands of people outright and tens of thousands more via radiation effects and whatnot, and not just people, civilians, non-combatants, uh, that those numbers are lower than would have been had uh, the invasion actually occurred. And that's probably true. It's definitely true that the numbers of Americans uh, and other allied forces lost were lower through the uh, use of the atomic weapons than through an invasion. So those are some of the reasons that uh, the United States decided to use the atomic bomb, some of the backstory 
leading up to uh, its deployment. Let me know in the comments section down below if you think this was a good decision uh, or if you think the United States could have compelled the Japanese to surrender without using the atomic bombs. Surely uh, the United States was unable to foresee all of the repercussions of using the atomic bomb in combat. So if you have any questions or comments about that, drop them in the comment section down below. If you would like to support our museum uh, and our YouTube channel, check the description down below for ways you can. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. And keep watching for future videos. Uh, in the immediate future, we're going to continue to talk about the use of atomic weapons uh, as we remember the 75th anniversary. Uh, and then we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming Thanks for watching.